Welcome. Welcome to our Christmas Eve service at the Ewing Covenant Presbyterian Church. We're glad that you've chosen to join with us this night. Our service is originating from the historic 1867 sanctuary, and I hope the warmth of this space will speak to you this night. We come here to celebrate, and we hope that you have enjoyed the music that you've just listened to. Throughout the history of the church, Christians have gathered to celebrate the birth of Christ. Christians have done so in times of natural disaster, of persecution, during times of plenty, in times of peace. They've done so in the midst of war and natural disaster. And now we do so in the midst of a pandemic that makes it unsafe for us to be physically together. But we do gather to worship God anyway. For those of you who've joined us by computer, we encourage you to use the chat function you'll find on your screen to note your presence with us tonight, that we might have the names of all those who are present. And we will be checking the phone numbers of those who dialed in, called in, so we can see whose numbers have shown up and find those names to go with them. We're glad that you've joined us this night we're glad that you're here to celebrate with us, wherever you may be right now. We are together here to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. We've gathered with candles lit, and those candles remind us that we are gathered here in the midst of a pandemic. When we gather on Sunday mornings, we have a single candle in, this, in the Advent season that reminds us of all those who are serving in this time, reminds us of those whose lives are threatened, reminds us of the separation we have in this time. But that candle, the candle light, reminds us that we are joined together through the spirit of our God who comes to meet us wherever we are. Thank you for joining us for worship this night. And now I invite you to watch and listen as Vijay and Sheila and Chelsea and Kathy light the Christ candle for us. Candle lighting. Light one candle for Christ. Because the world is broken and the weight is low, but Christ is with us through it all. In humble manger, in a backwater town, a baby, on a convinced cross, a king, in every heart and every home, where hope, peace, joy, and love enter, Christ with us. Glory to God in the highest heaven, she whispers, and peace to all on earth. So we light one candle because it only takes one Christ with us. And now, please join with me in the call to worship. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Glory to God in the highest heaven. Let us worship the Prince of Peace. And join now in song, singing Carol 133, O Come All Ye Faithful.
you to join with us in a responsible, responsive canticle of praise. You can join in or just listen as Anne and I lead this prayer. Blessed are you, O Christ our God. You were before time began and came to the world to save us. Blessed are you, Son of Righteousness. You shine with the Father's love and illumine the whole universe. Blessed are you, Son of Mary. Born a child, you shared our humanity. Blessed are you, Son of David. Born to rule, you received gifts from the wise man. Blessed are you, Son of Man. Baptized by John, you saved us from ourselves. Blessed are you, Heavenly King. Teaching and preaching, healing and comforting, you proclaimed the kingdom. With all the voices of heaven, we celebrate the coming of our Savior. Let heaven and earth shout their praise. With all the creatures on earth, we sing and dance at your birth. Praise, praise and, and glory, glory to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. at the end of a wonderful song. Greetings all. Thank you for joining again. Again, thank you for joining us in this time of worship this night. As we gather here in this space, there are two, four, six of us. So we're under our 10 people limit. And we are definitely socially distanced. Yes, there is a back pew sitter. And there's no, only Anne is in the front. So we're a normal congregation, if you will. But we are glad that you've come to share in this time. As I worked in preparation for this short meditation tonight, I kept coming back to one of the Christmas passages, one of the traditional parts of the whole Christmas celebration. It's from the Gospel of John, and it's the last passage that we will read in our lessons and carols tonight. It's the passage that talks about the word and the word becoming the light and the light coming into the world and not being overcome by darkness. It's the passage that talks about the word becoming flesh and dwelling with us here and now. And I thought how powerful that word is this particular year as we are here in the midst gathering in this way in the midst of this pandemic actually in the midst of a trifold pandemic of covid of injustice racial injustice and who knows what to call the politics of our time but we're gathered here 
in a dark time. We've been gathering this way for nine months. Do you realize that? Nine months now. You realize what else takes nine months? The birth of a baby. So I'm wondering this night, what is going to be birthed out of this gestation time that we are in the midst of? What, what's coming out of these nine months? We could be focused on the darkness. We could be focused on the death and the disease, and we do need, do need to respond and care about that. We need to continue to reach to those who mourn without being able to mourn together. We need to be able to find ways to reach out to those who are confined in their space because of, of disease, out of fear of being contaminated by someone who doesn't even know that they're sick. We need to be aware that death is a real product of this pandemic. Think about how many people have died, but do not let that darkness of death overcome you in this moment. Think about all the doubts we have. Why is God bringing this upon us? Well, I'm not sure that God brings it upon us, but God does work in the midst of it to confront the evil and the darkness of our lives. The horrors that have gone on over these past nine months, people being killed senselessly, Rumors spreading, conspiracy theories that build and build until we are not sure what to believe. All of that darkness has come to the fore in these past nine months. And, and what, what would that bear for us? But there's another side to all of that. Remember that God came into this world that we might know the love of God that the light shined in the midst of the darkness so we might find our way. The light shines so that we would not be consumed by the darkness. And the light has continued to shine. Think of those people who have risked their own lives to care, who have reached out in caring for others. Think not just of the nurses and the doctors and the medical as valuable and precious as the gift of their healing and care has been. But think of those essential workers. You know what that means yet? Those are the workers who provide for others in whatever they need. It's the caregivers, it's the hall cleaners, it's the delivery people. It's the, the store grocery delivery folk. All of those folk, all of those who are essential to those of us who can't go out. Think of those first responders, both medical and police, who continue to respond over and over again to those emergency calls that have emerged through this time in our lives. Think of all the way that the teachers and our educators have reached out to our children, to our students through screens and by risking their own health by attending classes that they're teaching. Those are all glimpses that the light has brought to us of God's love and God's care in the midst of these times. And that is the simple message tonight. That God has so loved this world that he sent his only son, only son, that we might know God's grace, we might know God's love, we might know God's care. God became flesh and dwelt among us so that God's presence with us would become real. And then would become real through the actions of people who followed, of people who believed, of the people who witnessed to you of God's love and, and brought you to a place where you would attend this service tonight. The light has come into the darkness and continues to burn. 
The light comes into the world of darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. You hear the echoes of Paul's words here. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Not death, not anything. So this night, in the light of this space, in the place where you are sitting now, the angel of the Lord comes to you and says, I bring you good tidings. So do not be afraid, be at peace. And know that for you this night, in the city of David, a savior is born who is Christ the Lord. Give thanks to God, live in the light, know that the light cannot be overcome. All praise be to God, amen. And now it is time for our Christmas prayer. God, creator of the universe, on this most holy of nights when our anticipation is at its highest, before you, we tell again the story of the birth of your son. There are those among us, God, who easily catch the excitement, the suspense of the new baby about to be here, right here, in our midst. 
God, there are others among us who have already settled down into the assurance, the solid truth of you as life eternal. But many of us are weary and we ask in a world turned upside down by a virus, who can trust in anything? God, you are mystery and change agent. We need to really take in your story this night. We imagine the baby's fingers, his toes, the beauty of his skin, his astoundingly loud cry and the burbling sounds he makes. Yes, God, there are some, am some among us who just want to catch a glimpse of him, to see him. The cautious ones amongst us, God, are left unmoved, hesitant to look upon the baby because his vulnerability may unmask our own fragility. God, there are the sage ones among us who know that he, that you are inside each of us. He is inside each one of us. We are him, in him we are you. Heaven touches ordinary dust like us. God, you are masterful, miracle spinner. Breathless, we all are waiting. Waiting. Waiting for the stunning glory, which is yours, shatters our apathy. Waiting for it to shatter our disdain. For your love to be reflected in ours that we give away. For your mercy to be given in our mercy to ourselves and unto others. Yes, God, we are waiting for your world to heal. Help us. Help us to live in a new way, respectful of the necessary balancing of our cities, our lifestyles, with delicate ecosystems and creaturely life you have created. And we yearn for peace, God. We are weary of conflict and discord. And God, we ask that you quench our thirst and restore us to community. Especially this night, peace is what our hearts yearn for. Laying down our burdens, Lord, we turn to embrace your son, the prince of all peace. God, redeemer of all things, we are ready. We are ready. We will hold the baby. We will listen to your wisdom and we will seek after your understanding. We will welcome your divine counsel and leading. In this holy babe, we recognize the greatest strength, which is yours and yours alone, Lord. And we know that it is this babe, wrapped in just ordinary strips of cloth, who is our savior. A savior who taught us how to pray, saying, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We begin now our service of lessons and carols. And I invite you to sit back wherever you may be. Close your eyes, perhaps and imagine the scenes that these stories tell. Or sit back, close your eyes, and imagine you're sitting with us here in this space, gathered with everyone else to hear again the wondrous story of the birth of the Christ child, said in word, but also in music. Let us hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A first reading tonight 
is from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. Listen for the word of the Lord. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall lie down with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the ass, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now a carol, prepare the way, O Zion. Christmas, everyone. The second reading is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. 
How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on to you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her.
too fast. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that all the entire Roman world should be counted. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son, and she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available to them.
The Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, Don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you. Wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly for the heavenly forces was, the, was with the angel praising God. They said, Glory to God in heaven, and on earth peace with among those whom he favors. When the, when the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they reported what had been told about this child. Everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Let us join in singing, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. sanctuary for this is the time in our traditional service when the lights are dimmed and we only have the candlelight into this darkness I will be reading the first chapter of John from that chapter and then as I go to light my candle I invite you to light your candles at home as we join with the choir and singing silent night here again, the word of our Lord. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But he, all, 
but all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but born of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of a father, father's only son, full of grace and truth. into the darkness, and the darkness shall not overcome it. Go out into this night, into the wind, into the rain, into the trials of this life. Go out in peace, knowing that God so loved you, God so loved this world, that he gave his Son, that we might live. That is good news to all the people. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen.
Merry Christmas, everyone. We hope you enjoyed Christmas with us at Ewing Presbyterian. Enjoy your night, enjoy your day. Merry Christmas to all. May your day be blessed. Amen. <laughs>